Okay, hello everyone. Welcome, welcome to another stream of Hugo's Desk. Uh, today, hope everyone is well. Today we are doing another honest show review. Um, let me know in the chat if uh, you can hear me well. Uh, as you know, now we're doing streams every week. Uh, the reason today the stream is earlier at 3 o'clock is because I've discovered that the Foundry had a stream at 5 and so I don't want to like really do streams at the same time as them. So, and I think I have, they have another one at five next week. So I think I'm going to try this and see how it goes with three o'clock instead of five. Also, let be, sh be sure to tell me on the chat what you think uh, about that timing. But that was the plan was for me to start doing these streams at three because that way I never... Uh, you know, I never overlap with streams from Foundry as well because they always do them at uh, five. Um, so yeah, so um, remember we're doing now streams every week. Every two, like we alternate between honest show reviews, which is what we're doing today, and then we alternate with nuke compositing. So next week we'll have nuke compositing. And the week after that, on a show reviews, and then the week after that, new composting. So that's how we're gonna keep going. Most likely all the way up to FMX uh, until I didn't have to stop. Um, so yeah, so that's the plan. That's the plan is for me to do them every week. And uh, someone on the chat was asking, how do you submit the show reel? So, so Fangirl Ash, I think that's your name. You need to submit. Uh, you need to submit the show reel um, through the link on the description of the video. And remember, for everyone that wants to submit the show reel, you need to make sure you let me know because I want to. Um, I'm I'm working on having a website where people can log in and they can actually book themselves into the review. But I haven't done that yet. But I I feel like it would be nice if I have like some kind of way of. Um, of having a booking system uh, because people send the showreel and then they forget to book it because if I if I don't get it booked I can't really do it I'm not doing the showreel without the person here I really want to have the artist here I want to talk to them I want to like see what they have to say want to get their point of view as well across so I'm, I'm really never going to do these showreels by myself alone um, just wanted to all for you to know that um, so that's why, like when you ship, like for example, I received four show reels this uh, week, but only one person contacted me. So the other three, they could have been on the show, but because they never contacted me, um, I didn't book them. Because, you know, I want to make sure you have a microphone, you have a camera, you can be on the show. Uh, so yeah, so keep that in mind um, that um, that you need to book it. Oh, I'm sorry, Nub, that it's 7 a.m. for you. <laughs> I'm sorry that... I'm, I'm experimenting with these times. I can see some people on the chat say it's a better time. Other people say it's not a better time. I need to like start thinking a bit about this. Maybe four o'clock instead of three, or maybe, I, I don't know. I need to like, or maybe seven, maybe later. Um, I need to kind of like start thinking about how I'm going to do this or maybe alternate the timings. I don't know. Really, really definitely need to to work on that and try to figure out which time is the best one or maybe i rotate the times i don't know like I, i'm up, up for suggestions so you, you you let me know what you think as well and and by the way i need to apologize for the lateness of the stream i do apologize i had a technical issue and um and so uh, yeah moez is you're one of those that sent and forgot to contact yeah i i just I just need the confirmation because I need to like make sure the person is booked and has a microphone and everything. With that in mind, I only have one showreel to review today uh, because only one person confirmed. So we're only going to do one. Now, we're going to have a giveaway as usual at the end of the stream. So we'll do the review, then do the giveaway, and then that's it. Uh, there's a stream from Foundry at 5 o'clock. Don't forget that. Um, so, and then we'll be back next week. Now, uh, and that in mind, Moez is just maybe maybe contact me and we can do it the next one. The next one is in two weeks. So you contact me on social media. You can email me. You can contact me on LinkedIn, Twitter. Yeah, just or you can check my email on YouTube. If you go to YouTube, there's a email contact. Before we start the review, I just wanted to like uh, make sure I do a shout out to BankQ. BankQ are the sponsors of this stream. 
So I can't thank enough for BenQ for them to support the stream. So I just wanted to like um, uh, give a big shout out to BenQ Europe and especially the team there, uh, Vincent and Rita as well. Thank you so much for all the support that you give me week in, week, in, week out, uh, both of sharing the, the links around and also like giving so much support to me. Uh, couldn't really do these streams without BenQ. BenQ is, uh, I use BenQ every day. And as you can see here on my studio, I have three BenQ monitors right over here, an SW and two PDs. Some reviews are gonna come out on my on my channel soon. Um, and yeah, and I, I just, just can't thank enough BenQ for all the lovely support that they give me to the stream it's it's wonderful and so with that in, with that in mind i'm going to show you an uh, a small little commercial from bank you uh, and then we'll jump into the showroom review so let's let's have a look at that and and then i'll be right back Okay, thank you so much, BenQ, for supporting the channel so much. Much appreciated. So yeah, so that's really it. Yeah, someone was asking on the chat if the Foundry was live here. It's not on my channel, no. They have their own YouTube channel, and they're going to be live there. Um, I believe I can just go and check out and, and check it real quick. Um, I believe their stream is at 5, I believe. Uh, let's see here. Is it here? Uh, live there... Uh, three, two, twelve. Oh, sorry, they have so many streams. <laughs> so many streams that I'm okay. So twenty nine is today, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, that's the one. Uh, I'm just yeah. It's gonna be in ninety nine minutes. So it'll be before. Uh, you'll have time to watch my stream and then jump into their stream. Um, so I'm just gonna like share my screen here real quick, so you can see what I mean. So that's the, that's the stream. Um, so that's the stream. It's uh, going to be Stormy Scenes and Nuke for the BBC's Boat Story and Paramount Plus No Scape. So it's going to be like uh, Vine's FX lead, visual effects comp compositor, and compositing supervisor. They're going to be the live in about 98 minutes. So be sure to check that out. Um, it's going to be cool. That's why I've moved my slot. I didn't want to interfere with this stream because I know a lot of people, a lot of the same people would be watching. So I don't want to like dilute the viewship of both streams. But yeah, be sure to check that out. Uh, it should be nice. It should be really good. Anyway, let's just jump into, I've already shared on the chat the link for the giveaway. Let's just jump into the review. So I have uh, a review today with... Just open up the quick time here. Um, the review is with Alexander. Let me just double check his last name. Um, so that would be, uh, sorry, uh, Alexander Tosne. I think that's how I pronounce his name. I hope so. <laughs> but yeah, let's just uh, start the call and then we'll, um, we'll chat with them. Uh, let me just uh, do this here real quick. So... Give me a second, because I'm I'm not doing this on Zoom anymore, so I'm doing it on um, I'm doing it on Google Meet, and it's the first time I'm doing it on Google Meet, so I need to kind of like sort out a few things here um, for it to to work. 
Uh, so just give me one quick second for this to kind of like be sorted. Um, okay, so. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, so that would be that one. Yeah, okay, so join. Okay, hopefully. Okay, you're already here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. can you okay, hear me? yes. I can. Let me just. Uh, yeah, give me just one second. Um, apologies for that. Yeah, can you can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, cool. Excellent. Yes, I can hear you. So, uh, I think everyone else hears you as well. Um, and if the chat doesn't hear you, please let me know. I'll, I'll put you on on the screen in a minute. Um, I'm just like, it's the first time I'm using this thing. Um, <laughs> and I don't have anyone, don't have anyone really to test stuff with. Um, so, so keep that in mind because I can't really call myself. <laughs> so, so I can't really like call myself and test this, but I th hopefully it's working. So um, hi, how are you doing, man? How are you, how are you doing today? I'm really good, thank you. Thanks. Yeah, I'm really excited to do this. And uh, how are you? I'm very good. So, uh, should I call you Alexander, Alex? What What do you usually like to be called? Uh, I generally go by Xander. Xander. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So, so Xander, tell me, tell me things about yourself. Like, uh, give us a little bit of an intro, so everyone knows what you're up to, and we'll jump into the show real after. But tell us where you're calling from. What do you do? What's your story? Tell us. Uh, so, Alexander Tos Xander Tosney. Uh, I live in the UK, uh, Sussex area. I, um, I've recently graduated from University of Chichester, studying 3D animation and visual effects. And um, I'm currently looking to just break through into the industry. So, yeah, and so I, uh, I, after my, in my third year of university, I took up uh, railway courses and and started the Hugo's Desk courses. And, um, and yeah, built a showreel around that. Okay. And so um, tell us like like how you said you said you were doing courses how long how, how long have you been working in these softwares and and how long have you been working in general um, so I've been working with Houdini for now about over a year a year and a half okay um, so I, I started on Houdini in my second end of my second year we were um, working on a uh, kind of a university film that was outsourced. And it was going to be a pilot episode of an animated TV show, and um, and they needed some visual effects to be done using Houdini, and mm -hmm. I, I thought I'd be, of course I'd, I hadn't done it, so I, I stepped into Houdini and I really enjoyed it, and I got to make an explosion and some uh, muzzle flash effects, which is just awesome, um, and yeah, it was from, from that point onwards just found a love for Houdini, and and got to composite it in, it was huh. it was great, cool. Um, someone on the chat. Let me just uh, double check here. Someone on the chat is saying the guest sound is too sa Sander is too loud. Is his sound better now? I've lowered slightly the sound, so don't, you don't need to do anything, Sander. I've done it already on my side, so I think it should be better now. So apologize for the sound. Um, that's cool, man. So, so what? What's your goal? Like, you have this showreel. What do you want to do? Like, what's your objective? Working in film commercials. What do you have in mind? Uh, breaking through into the film industry, I, I, I've, I've always had a passion for film as a kid. I've just always loved it. And this is my way that I, I want to join the industry. Um, yeah, I just, I, I just love being able to create these effects. I, I, I mainly have a passion for explosions and water effects like clips in. Yeah, just... That's cool. Just really <laughs> You're going to enjoy the next uh, talk at the Foundry then, because it's all about that as well. The one yeah. at 5 o'clock, it's about Houdini and about uh, expl and about all of that. Um, okay, cool. So let's just... I'm going to just roll your showreel. Uh, I'll loop it on the background. I'll share my screen. So you don't need to like care about looking at the stream itself, because the stream is going to be very delayed. But um, I'll share my screen, and then that way you can see what i'm um what i'm doing and um and then everyone else can see you as well so um hopefully like i said to everyone apologize if you guys are seeing something weird on your side um i'm just like for the first time using this google meet thing um so but you should be seeing my screen do you see it yeah 
Okay, cool. Yeah. So I'm going to loop this. I don't, I'm not going to put sound on the show reel because, unfortunately, I do get... Um, 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 I'm always getting flagged on YouTube, so... So I'm, I'll put it without sound. So this show reel that you have here, um, what's the status of it? Is this your latest, latest show reel? Do you still have work that you want to put into this? Or is this kind of like already the show reel you're sending out for for artists and for, for, for companies? Uh, so this is the show reel I've pieced together most recently and I'm sending out to companies to apply. Um, yeah, it was, I had a, a lot of work, but I, I got feedback originally few months back saying my show reel was too long and so i condensed it down to a few less pieces okay yeah. okay um someone on the chat is saying that that your sound is breaking up a bit and it is true it's breaking up a bit uh be sure if you be sure you don't have anything on the background going like you know dropbox or anything syncing or anything you know uh just that you have the maximum bandwidth on on uh, on sound so that it doesn't break up Otherwise, people won't understand your full sentences. Yeah, that should be better. Cool. So, and someone is asking on the chat, you both know Udini and Nuke as well, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So, but you mostly want to work as an effects artist, right? You're not interested in being a composter. Uh, I want to enter the industry however I can. I do love compositing. So in my, in university, in our second year, we had to choose the route of 3D animation or visual effects. Yeah. And our, our lecturer was a compositor, Matthew Jakes, and um, and he worked at uh, DNEG for many years, and uh, and and he kind of built the groundwork for compositing through Nuke, and yeah. So pr cool. prior to that, I I had used After Effects when in college. Cool. Yeah. Well, it's very important for you to know Nuke anyway, because as a, as a three D artist, especially if you're going to work in film you're going to many times be preparing pre-composites to give to the compositing department. So it's incredibly useful for you to know as much compositing as possible. And in fact, some 3D artists even comp their own shots. Sometimes that happens uh, as well with the support of compositors, of course. So they can deal with the roto painting and cleanup. Then you can deal with just the CG itself, you know. Um, cool. Okay, so let's go through shot by shot then uh you have this really nice intro by the way which is which is um also i'm assuming a project you did in udini as well isn't it the 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 title sequence you've done here oh yeah, this this title sequence is, is brought in through after effects oh cool cool excellent cool um okay so tell us a little bit about the first shot here what's going on here so this is uh so building destruction thing. yeah tell us a little bit about this uh so this was part of a rebelway course where um you have an RBD sim. You have a building. You're gonna blow it up, and um, and I, originally it's just a building collapsing. And I, I like to put my own twist on it and go, why is this building gonna explode? And I sat there watching uh, Batman vs Superman when <laughs> before I actually did this explosion. And uh, it's the scene at the beginning where Metropolis is being destroyed, and yeah. uh, Wayne Tower comes down, and it's the plume of smoke, and it, it just. But it, it looks really cool, and having the lighting interaction using Karma, and it's yeah, cool. Now, um, it's uh, uh, <laughs> people are still complaining about the mic. Come on, guys, don't be like that. Like we're not, we're not doing a radio show. It's it's okay. It's okay. Sometimes the mics and the sounds are problematic. Let it go. Um, so, so I would say that the like people are asking, like if you have any mic gain or noise suppression, but but I don't I don't have any control over that. So do you have anything turned on on your side? No. No. Okay. Well. So apologies to everyone that the quality of the sound is not the best, but we'll 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 talk slowly and and get it through. So I think you did a great job on this. There's a couple of things that I would tell you. Um, well, first of all, from a just from a glitch technical point of view, I've noticed that there's like inconsistency between your motion blur. So there's something going on where you have completely sharp frames mixed with motion blur and then it jumps to sharp again and then mixed with motion blur as well. So it seems to me that your your 3D motion blur is glitching out at somewhere. And so I don't know where that's coming from. Are you doing the, the motion blur in 3D or in Nuke? In 3D. Okay, cool. 
Um, so yeah, so you need to look into that because it's it's not supposed to stop like that. Um, do you have any idea what that could be? Uh, it, it it could be a little glitch through Karma. I've 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 had this issue before and I've had to take it into Nuke um, and render it without the motion blur in Houdini. But yeah, I think this is one I need to yeah, definitely go in. Yeah, well. it would be nice because it it this it it makes it. Um, when you play it back, it jitters quite a lot because of that, because it's jumping. So, so you either need to fix this or you need to look into an alternative method of doing motion blur inside of Nuke or something. And uh, just fiddle around with the settings a bit and see if there's anything in the settings of Udini that is breaking this up. Um, besides that, I think the, the debris itself is looking good. I mean, I might say that I, I kind of wish that you had more different variations between the debris. So I feel like the the building itself, it, because your debris are so large, it's kind of going off the scale. It's making it look like the building is a bit small. And I think you need to kind of look into maybe making breakup that would be a lot more tiny. So you would have a mixture of very large debris pieces and also very, very thin debris pieces so that you can give some scale to this because at the moment it's kind of like ruining the scale a little bit, okay? So the more you could break up your your debris, the better. Um, the other thing as well that I would say, again, all these feedbacks or just me nitpicking this because I, I do think this looks great. Uh, so don't get me wrong and don't get... Um, don't become upset about the the the, the comments, you know. Um, I'm just like giving you like some creative input and also like what I'm first in first impressions on this really for me from my side because I just saw this show real this morning and haven't really thought much about it. Um, but but first impressions are are, are important, of course. Um, so yeah, anything you can do to kind of solve the scale. The other thing about the scale is, and I'll talk about the explosion in a minute. I'm just talking about the destruction itself. The other thing I would say is usually buildings, if they're this big, you know, this is a building of, let's see here. So it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, 11, like 11 stories high. Uh, a building this big would not drop this quickly. I feel like your explosion would break this thing. And then it would have been nice if it would just like get there get a bit of rubble and a breakup and then fall. I think it needs to wait a bit because right now, because it's falling so quickly, it kind of gives me a sense that it's made of like paper or something. I think it's it's dropping too quickly for the size of it, you know? Um, like th think about think about the World Trade Center. Of, I know it's a much bigger building because it's a, one of the few references we have of buildings dropping like that. But you see how how slow it gets sometimes. So I think it would be nice if it gets a bit slower dropping and also doesn't drop right away, so that the explosion happens, and then that means the debris falls, and then the inner, you know, think about the inner. Um, uh, columns of the building then they break up or or don't extend like they they can't they can't outstand the weight of it like they they can't uh take the weight and then they break you know so i think f several stages would make for a more realistic breakup you know yeah that kind of that like effect yeah. yeah exactly it's like it explodes and it still holds the building but then it kind of like breaks on itself it's kind of like it's too much for the for the pillars and for the for the foundations and then the foundations kind of let it go and the foundations break up so i think it would be nice if you had like those kind of stages um but again i'm nitpicking i think on first reaction this looks great and and just just have a think about that i have a think about how much you could improve and give scale to this because i think the Scale is a very important part of this kind of thing, you know. So, uh, sorry, just one second because I forgot one thing here. Ah, forgot to switch one thing here. I always have a backup running and I forgot to run the backup. Look at that. Look at me not running a backup. Um, I always have like a backup recorder. Um, okay, cool. Now, talking about the explosion, I think the explosion looks great, especially the beginning. I love your two balls, like the nuclear almost mushroom thing that explodes all the debris. That looks great. 
The only thing I would say about the explosion is more until the end. I kind of wish they would have break up a bit more because usually um, uh, explosions like this, they kind of have different sections. And, and I do think that that might, might be when you comp this. Like if this would have been comped to a live action, obviously some transparency would exist with the background and so of course you would have some parts thinner and thicker but because it's this is at night night time because the background is black it kind of like looks a bit too mushy and too even kind of feel like i would have wished that had to have more breakup on this final section of the fireball um that's one way of dealing with it the other way could be that maybe you want to consider compositing this on a brighter background just to see how it looks, you know, uh, instead of being a nighttime background. Uh, because also, nighttime has other issues as well, which have to do with ex with ex uh, um, uh, um, you know, exposing. Because exposure on this, this is so bright. If you would have been filming this at nighttime, I think the explosion would probably be more blown out. But then if it's at daytime probably it would just look very different you know so but i think i think that's the only thing i would react to your fireball i feel like your fireball should have more breakup um but yeah and then final stage the whole building gets ripped apart and again it's not helping the scale that it's so broken up you see how many pieces you have here it it's it's looking too fragile it's almost like the building was too small and too tiny i would have i would have imagined that certain parts of the building would stay up you know like maybe yeah. one of the walls would stay or maybe one section would stay there and then the debris would be around i don't really believe that the entire building would be turned to dust like you have here so consider that as well and then once that's done um the smoke that looks great i mean I wish it had more resolution. I wish it had more detail. But I understand how much, how much hard it, how hard it is for a student or for some for a junior with just one computer to render something like this. So I, if this was set to the farm, if you were in a company, you could have pumped up the quality and the and the, um, the quality of this smoke, and then it would have looked better. But but it does look cool, uh, and I like the nature of the black dust rubble, which is really nice. Um, so it's almost like it. You don't even see it anymore. Um, so th those are my comments in general. Um, and I think one final comment I would say is that I do think that this would work better for you to show it either at daytime or maybe on a lower camera. It would probably would help um, as well. But uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. Like, what do you what do you think about that? Like of what everything I said. Like I, like I said, don't don't take it too 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 hard. Like I think it is does look great. It's just that those things would improve the shot, you know. Oh no, hundred percent. It was it, some, one of the things I was trying to talk about was that kind of that weight of the building, and I I hundred percent see what you mean. It, it it just feels like it's made out of plastic straws, and it just yeah, it's something down and having that back wall up. So yeah, it become, it looks like too fragile right it starts to look too fragile yeah exactly um yeah cool man i i i think i think this yeah i think this looks great i really think it looks great but have that have a think about that um you know about those things that i said and maybe try to to make it because you see that this is a massive explosion especially the explosion is just on the side and so that's the other thing that is not helping your scale because the building breaks here with a massive explosion and then it's breaking throughout the whole building is breaking the same way. So mm -hmm. you see, I really think that the destruction would mostly, the biggest destruction would be on the right side. The left side would kind of be hanging a bit more. So it's almost like once it, it becomes rubble, I do think the left side would stay a little bit more complete. Maybe pieces of the walls would stay there, you know, or at least it would fall later. It wouldn't fall right away, you know. So all those little minute details are really, uh, you know, and it's hard to to use references from building construction demolitions because they 
dem demolish everything at the same time. And so it's a bad reference, you know, because it's not like it's a controlled explosion. It's not like one. This almost looks like it's a missile that hit the building or something. Almost, you know. <coughs> so cool. Someone is uh, Studio Divis is asking you on the chat why the black background. Uh, he asks you that. So what do you answer? Uh, what, do you, what do you have to answer about that? It really was just to kind of capture that element of nighttime to really kind of give the illumination of the lights, the floodlights on the floor and the the fire explosion, the, the kind of the colors that emit. Um, but yeah, oh. I, I going back to the, the daylight, I, I, I'm just angry. I need to have white, white background or cool. daylight. Um, I'm just gonna, cool. Yeah, I understand that as well. Uh, I'm just gonna like change one thing here because I think people are seeing it. Yeah, I'll put sidebar so people see it a bit bigger. On the stream it was a bit too small for people to see um yeah i understand that it's on i don't mind that it's on black um as long as you can break up more of the explosion with the transparency I, I don't really mind that it's in black um i do, i do think it could have also been in white uh, on a blue sky but um, i think it works either way um okay cool so enough about this one <laughs> so let's uh, jump into the next one so tell us a little bit about um, the. Oh, by the way, one. I just noticed one thing now. There is no way I would believe the lights would be on after this explosion. <laughs> so maybe consider maybe consider that the lights would switch off or the um, or that the lamps would break as well because of the okay. massive amount of blast that you had. So. Um, okay, tell us a little bit about this one, City Bombardment. Tell us a little bit about this. So the explosion effect you see come, that comes in, into the scene later. So this was another Rebel Way. And uh, we were using reference of the scene from Avengers Endgame when the Avengers campus gets destroyed by Thanos' other yep. ship. And um, so it's that bombardment scene. And I created a bombardment, but I, I didn't have anything for it to sit on. So I thought, why not? composite this why, why not find a plate and mm -hmm. make this sit in as best as i have and it's yeah and it's compositing and my own effect cool okay cool so first off let me like talk about the expl i'll talk about the comp in a minute let's talk about the explosion itself uh, and the the first of all, I really like your breakdown. I like the way that you're showcasing every single step of of what you've done in Udini. This is really nice because you're explaining very well in detail what you've done. Now the explanation is great, but the final result has has I think it has some work. I, I feel like your explosion the um, the way this the fire flies out you know especially here uh, i'm assuming you see my mouse you see my mouse right yeah 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 so the way that this um fiery thing comes out of the explosion it looks very bubbly it doesn't really look like a, an explosion it looks like it's made of little small bubbles and i do think that and then it disperses quite in a strange way um so i feel like you need you need to look into this because it it kind of looks a bit fake it it almost looks like it depends on of course on what kind of explosions it is because usually if this is a bombardment if it's a bomb falling down because that right now it almost feels to me like you're seeing a pyrotechnic explosion which you usually have a lot of lines coming out a bomb falling down would slightly be different because the bomb falls down starts a blast then you have like a um you need like a a, a blast of almost uh, smoke and wind that blasts everything out so it's almost like you have this kind of don't like the donut shape blast that you're missing from the explosion would which would probably move these cars around and probably would break this pillar but that's a composting thing we'll talk about the composting in a minute but um, I just feel that it, it doesn't look very realistic, especially the way that it dissipates on fire. Uh, and that could also be because the exposure of it is so, so bright compared to everything else on the plate that it's not really looking sitting there. 
So I'm not entirely sure if it's a problem of your simulation or if it's a problem of you merging the simulation into the composite. It could be a bit of both, okay? So so I, I, I feel like, especially the way it's merged into this comp, because if you look at the comp, look, the, look at the black points on his uh, jacket and the black point on the on the shadow and it's quite grayish it's almost like very much like a log plate it's looks very washed out and your explosion is pure black so it it your explosion needs to be more washed out as well for it to fit in and i think that's also the reaction i'm having i'm having two reactions here i'm thinking the black points are so off that makes it look more fake but then it that kind of like shows more of the bubbly problems that you have on all of the dispersion of this explosion, you know, so um, now really nice touch with the uh, with the alarms. I love that. <laughs> that was that's a great, very inspired moment of you making the alarms going off with the explosion. Um, so yeah, so so I think I think before you go in and tweak this simulation, because you could tweak so that you don't have. It's almost like it looks too wispy and too bubbly on the beginning. Before you do any of that, I would advise you to try to composite this a bit better uh, because I think that will already kind of solve most of the problems. Um, and I know you're not a compositor, but at least it would be nice if you've made this effort to comp it into a plate. I do think it would be nice if you would have massage it a bit more and I don't think it's that difficult. It's more a matter of you getting some grade nodes on here and this this darker area all the blacks of your explosions they just need to be more washed out just use the jacket as a reference of how black something would be on the shot in fact the blackest thing on this shot is the phone which is pure black there also maybe this shadow on the on the rooftop here that's the blackest thing you also have some really dark shadows here under the cars as well. So as long as you match to that level of blacks, that means you need to lift. You need to get a grade node and use the lift node, the lift slider to lift to this kind of bluish, slightly gray tint of the blacks. That would help. And then the second thing that will help would be something that is being suggested on the chat, which is grain. I think that would also help to add some grain into the plate. And then the other thing is the exposure itself. So this is a really sunny day, very sunny day. And so if you're exposing this, which is like the camera is already having to either have an ND filter or the f-stop is probably very high because it's so sunny because you can, can see the depth of field is 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 uh, quite sharp. Um, and so I would think that your explosion should be a lot more overexposed because the, um, the blast, well, it, it needs to be more in line with the exposure of the plate. And then the saturation is also wrong because you see the your plate is not very saturated. The saturation is very dull. There's not a lot of saturation on the greens. There's not a lot of saturations on the colors in general. And so your explosion is heavily saturated. So you also need to bring down the saturation of that explosion probably by half for it to match the plate. So I, I think once you get the explosions to fit in terms of black point, exposure, and saturation, then you can add a final grade to the whole thing only after that, because at the moment your grade is really not helping. Uh, because you see, if you go back here to your breakdown here, that's original play, fire elements, fire, blah, 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 blah. it's uh, somewhere here. Uh, yeah, final cinema, you see, so that's the plate. And then you put a final cinematic grade. And I, I think it's not, it's not helping as well. You need to like merge them both. So, so yeah, so before you adjust anything of the comments I made to you about the explosion itself, I think giving it a go in composting would help it, you know, um, yeah. is, is that, is that all you have any questions about that or you want to have anything to say anything? No, 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 it's, it's, it's brilliant. It's, 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 thank you for the comments on that. It's, no problem. And, and, 
The same goes for these fires. They are much better well integrated, by the way, but it would be the same thing. A little bit less ex less um, saturation, a little bit better black points, you know, so that you, you see, if you look under this window here, you can kind of see the black point is quite, even on this window here on the bottom here, you see it's not really black. It's kind of like, I don't know, like, let me just like get my... I'll get my where is it my my color meter here. So you see, like, notice here the blackest window here is forty four fifty one forty five, and then your black is much lower. Look, it's like half. It's like twenty twenty something. So if I look at reds, that's eighteen red, eighteen green, eighteen blue, and the blackest thing on the window is like. 47 41 47 so you're you're way off in terms of grade uh, in terms of um of of levels of darkness and the same goes for here so like the the darkest thing you have on the blacks you see if you look at this phone where's this phone so the phone is here so if you look at his phone uh that one here so his phone is like 48 30 yeah and then in here we have 46, 49, 47, yeah, your blacks are just way crushed, you know, it's too much contrast, yeah. yeah. Obviously, you can even see this better in Nuke, you know, if you, in Nuke, you, you have the color picker, and then you can use the exposure nodes on the viewer and the gamma nodes on the viewer, and then you'll see it even better, you know, um, yeah. so, yeah, cool, man. Now, in terms of the shot itself, I like this shot a lot, I think. I think you should definitely tweak those things um and then if it's then if you still think this looks too much round bubbles coming out then maybe adjust that but i think the composite will sell this shot quite a lot um and and by the way the the helicopter uh, passing by the helicopter scale looks wrong to me um you probably want to change the way it comes out because you see it it goes through here and this it should be much bigger passing to camera, much much bigger, um, because it, otherwise, if you're trying to make it, because you see the giveaway is this um, this um, rooftop and the dude, and there's no shadow pass because if the if the if the helicopter was so close, you would have a big big shadow crossing the rooftop, and then the helicopter is right over here, so it looks like a miniature. So you might want to consider having the helicopter passing through this side instead. And I think it should be at least three times bigger when it passes through the the field. And I, I wouldn't even have the helicopter passing so, so near the camera because passing so near, you would have shadow interaction and the clothing of the dude would move because of the wind. So you kind of need to be careful with this helicopter. I think the helicopter should be much higher up and not even go close to the guy maybe just cross just cross on the top here you see yeah. much bigger and just cross on the top or if you want it could cross behind this wall like that and go like basically on a straight line and drop the bombs yeah. i just i just don't buy this curve that he did because the scale looks off you know yeah, yeah. um and then also on the helicopter itself I feel like there's some pre-multiplication problems because you can kind of see there's a black edge around the the helicopter. Um, I feel like this is most likely, you also see it on, on here as well. It's most likely you're doing color correction without respecting the pre-multiplication rules. So you need to kind of like be careful with that. Just have a look at it and see if you can solve that, you know. Okay. So <clears throat> don't get me wrong, but I, I feel like your other shot was better than this one. Um, so I think I think this shot is it it, it has quite a, a lot of issues and and I guess I guess it's um, the can of worms were, were was opened by yourself because you of course you want to be a Houdini artist but you're trying to comp this and you didn't really do a, a good job at comping it and so it's almost like if you would have shown the explosions on black or on a on a gray environment it would have been probably more beneficial for you to show your explosion than actually comping it because comping it means that you need to like like make it a bit better you know um and um 
And in case you can't do it, in case you are still learning Nuke or you don't have yet the the you don't really know your way around and doing this better, maybe then maybe work with someone else, maybe work with a composter and try to get this thing done as a partnership with someone. Sometimes that would be a good way to do it, you know. Okay. Anything else you want to talk about that? No, no I, I, these, these are all absolutely brilliant points. I, yeah, I need to go and really hit it with the comp and yeah, and address those issues first. Yeah. Um, cool. One last thing I would tell you about comp is that I think the if you look at these cars, which you brilliantly moved the alarm, which is really really great. Um, I think the sharpness needs to be sharper because there's really not a lot of defocusing going on on these cars and your explosion is too defocused. So I feel like maybe tone down the defocusing because it should be sharper. Uh, in fact, this plate is super sharp. Look, it's like even the mountains are sharp. So there's, uh, and even on the front here, the balcony is also sharp. This is a very high F stop. Um, you know, like it's probably the, the, the lens is not, you know, it's, it's really, there's, there's almost no defocusing going on here. No, almost no depth of field. Okay, cool. So now fire elements, I'm just going to move on. Let's move on to the next shot. So Xander, tell me a little bit about uh, this one. Uh, so this was in my. Uh, introduction to water effects in um, Rebel Way courses. Yep. And one of my favorite films is Avatar and Avatar 2. And I kind of use reference of the famous shot where the Tolkien jumps out of the water yep. and there's a sunset in the background and it's, a, it's a, an, an ocean render. And, cool, man. Yeah, so flips in. Cool. So I think, I think this looks great. Uh, so there's a couple of things that I would say. Let's start with this first shot. Um, I think the, the the physics are going a bit wild. So um, you see, first of all, this looks great. It's a bit grainy, but I understand that you probably don't have enough power to render this with more quality. So if, you, if this was on a company, they would have put it on a farm with 300 machines and it would have been rendered with like a brute force, more high quality, because at the moment it's very grainy. Um, so, but that's not something you should care about. Like everyone knows that this is a showreel from a from a junior, so it's th there's no don't worry about that. But um, I think the oil looks great when it comes out. It's all good, all good, all the way, all the way up to here. There's a moment here, there, that it goes a bit weird. It almost like loses the weight. And it becomes, you see, it it rotates down. I feel like whales are so huge, they wouldn't be so light. It looks to me like it's almost like I'm looking at a, a dolphin instead of a whale. So I think it needs more weight. It needs to go to the air, stay longer on the air, and not curve so much. And as it goes down, the splash would be gigantic. So So first of all... It wouldn't rotate so much, so as it, it would stay more to the air, and then as it drops, it wouldn't curve. It's almost like it would probably drop almost horizontally, and then the splash would be much, much bigger, because yeah. because whales are so gigantic. They're they're huge. I mean, now I would have to like try to find a reference, but I I try to see uh, probably if I could find one. Um, just double check real quick. See if I don't. Um, okay, so I'll just do like here. So, um, well, let's say whale jumping. Um, see if I can find like a video. Let's see here. Gigantic breaching. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, we're going to see a commercial now, probably, most likely. As, of course, we're going to see a commercial with a dog. It's always nice to have a dog on a commercial, always helps. <laughs> it sells better. When you have dogs on commercials, <laughs> you see that? Like, like actually, this is a this is a relatively good reference. Um, so let's see here. So uh, let's see here. Let's do it again. You see, you see, it doesn't. First of all, it doesn't go that far to the air. 
it it maybe you need to like not make it so high up in the air and then it there's a huge blast you see because it's so heavy that it never goes very high so i think maybe you need to like make it not go so high and then it drops and does a splash like it has to be almost like dropping horizontally and it splashes all over the place because yeah. right now you see again see the splash it's so much bigger when you look at yours your splash is just a little bit of a splash on the front. So it almost looks like a dolphin instead of a whale. You know what I mean? It looks a bit more like a controlled die rather than a... Exactly, exactly, exactly. And, and I understand that because Avatar, they are different types of whales and they are more... They have personality and they... I think they, they, they look different. But if you're trying to do a real whale, I would definitely look at these videos of real whales jumping and... Especially, you notice that they don't jump too high because they're too big. They're just too big. Um, let's see if we can see another one here. See? Ah, the person <laughs> the person was afraid. <laughs> but you see that, like, it doesn't jump too high. It's almost like half of the body is still inside the, still inside the ocean. Let's see another one here. Uh, so if I go back here. Let's see here. So giant whale jumps. Let's see here. You see again? You see that the 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 end section. Now I'm gonna get a lot of videos of whales on my wall. <laughs> <laughs> um, you see the end section. It doesn't even. Let's just go again. Again. It doesn't even. You see, like it still has. Like 20% of the whale is still inside the water. It doesn't even yeah. leave the water. And then it's so heavy that it just drops directly. Yeah. And then it splashes a lot. Like, you see, the splash is bigger. And so just try to do that. Try to get a bigger splash. And the whale can't go so high, you see? Because yeah. this is a dolphin right now. And then it drops. And and But, but, but yeah, I don't think that's too... I don't know. Well, I'm saying this, but I know it, you have to redo it again. But I think that that would be would be more realistic if you would have done it that way, you know. Yeah. Now on this side here, this looks great with the sun. I would just ask you to try to get a better composite between the sky and the line of horizon because this is very strange that we have orange an orange uh, horizon without affecting the water. So this horizon of your water looks like it's pure daytime at 12 o'clock. But right. then your photo looks almost like five or six o'clock in the afternoon. So there's a dis discrepancy between times here. So I think either you adjust your shader or you could in comp use a ramp and try to color correct and fog a little bit more of this into reds so that it looks like this red is getting reflected to this area here you know right yeah. so and it doesn't and also it you can't make it such a straight line it has to be more even this side looks better you know and it has to be like more blurred between um let's see here so if again so sunset beach see if we can yeah i see like well your sun is not so low it's not as low um in fact let's see here so sunset beach well not sunset let's say six o'clock or something like that i don't know if this is gonna work but maybe it will work uh six o'clock afternoon sun beach Probably not going to be this this easy uh, to find it, but yeah, that's kind of it. So it'll be something like, let's see here. Uh, yeah, it would probably be something like this or something like that. So if I go to here, yeah. So uh, what is this website? Oh, okay, it's a photo <laughs> that you need to buy. Okay, um, can I make it bigger? Yes, I can make it bigger. Okay, cool. So. Yeah, you see, you did a really good job with the brightness here, but uh, you see, well, this is this is this is not a good reference because there's too much clouds here. There's way too many clouds. There's like rain clouds, uh, and also the sun is a bit higher. But um, I kind of feel like you see, well, it's quite dark actually. Well, it's because of the dark cloud. This is not a good reference. It's not really not a good reference. This is because it's a. Let's see another one. So maybe this one here. Look at this one. 
Okay. Oh, this is a composite, probably. It looks very strange. That looks really strange. But even even in even even in here, you see that it doesn't really go red and blue. There's always a connection between the colors, yeah. you know. So I, t I think it's I think what's really pushing me out is this red, this bottom right. red. So maybe color correct it so that it has more blue into it, so that it matches better. You know, I think that would be, I think that would be it. Um, okay, and then this is the is this the same simulation, isn't it? Yeah. 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 You have some transparency problems as well between the foam, the water, and the whale as well. So there's a couple of things here going on that look weird. Um, is that because you've composited them separately, or is it? What do you think that could be? Um, I think that's actually a problem with the simulation. Okay. So, yeah. Because it's a bit the... too transparent in the sim. Yeah, I think it is, isn't it? Because let, let's go back to the videos that we were looking at. Um, uh, oh, I course, think that might be on the shader I applied to the foam and the spray. Might be, yeah, too transparent. Could be. Because, yeah. oh, come on. Come on. Let's see here. Ah, another commercial. Okay, Dune 2, yes. As if I don't know that Dune 2 is out. <laughs> Everyone knows Dune 2 is out. Um, yeah, you see, like, there's so much water dropping out of the whale and so much foam that you don't really see transparency. You just see foam and white. And I think your whale is too... Tra it's almost like it has, like, a a layer on top or something and that looks a bit strange it looks a bit weird um and so there's no connection with the water dropping from the whale so you see you see the water is dripping from the body of the whale yeah. see all that water coming down your water is not going from the surface it doesn't really touch the whale it's almost like you have a it's almost like it's not attached you need to look into right. that as well so that you can have the water dropping like a almost like um like a waterfall you know so it does that and then you have these drips coming out yeah so you need the drips coming out of the flappers here as well and everything yeah and then it drops and again the splash is too tiny same issues with the other one cool okay cool anything else about that shot or should we move on i have to move on, have to move on. cool Okay, so now next shot. Um, so tell us tell us a little bit about the next shot. Uh, so the next shot was a it's actually two shots, but I, I've had to condense it down to one shot. Uh, it was part of the fluids course um, I did, and obviously I took the skills we learned in the course and applied it to my own shot. And it's a uh, essentially creating uh, droplets, sheeting uh, the puddles on the floor. And, and lighting it uh, yeah cool now is this a combination of of just rain and also snow or is it supposed to just be rain so it's just rain uh but it's lit by the uh the lights you can see and i i, I felt there's this kind of it it has that snowy look because of the noise to do with the shader mm -hmm. um yeah it's, I, I tried to use some reference and i it's that glistening I, and I see what you mean, but it looks a bit like snow. Yeah, yeah, which is fine. Sometimes we have a mix, but um, I think the I think this looks good. But of course, missing the motion blur is missing, so it's looking very strange because it has no motion blur, you know. So and not having the motion blur is really causing quite a lot of problems here with these big, big lumps of water that are falling down. And in reality, they should really be blurred. They should be lines, yeah. you know. Um, so I think I think the motion blur is really missing here, and it would really help your shot quite a lot. Um, now the the dripping on the floor that looks great. I, I think this is looking really good. Uh, looks very realistic. As someone that lives in London, know all about this. Um, so so yeah. So I, I think it's it's a nice simulation. I think it did a good job, but I just feel like you you need the motion blur to make it work. You know. Otherwise, it's just looking very strange uh, because 
it just looks like you have these big blobs of water falling down, you know, like, like, look at this one, almost looks like a dolphin. It's like, it just have these really, really large blocks of water, almost like someone is on the rooftop sending buckets of water instead of rain, you know? Yeah. So I think, I think you look, look, look into this, making the droplets smaller and then motion blur them the hell out of them the the okay. floor looks great i think it's only really the rain itself that needs needs some work you know okay okay and then last i think this is, is no this is not last shot uh no it is it is last shot so tell me a little bit about this shot about the, the last one uh, so this is one where i didn't bring in any of my own effects i thought i just i need to hone some compositing skills and just go at it and i've got a, this is a plate off of Ash, action vfx cool. and then i use some assets from production crate and I had a go and cool. i use reference from um uh electro from no way home obviously with the kind of when he's extremely powerful cool cool yeah it's looking great um okay so First of all, um, even before I even talk about anything else, so so you didn't you didn't do the raise then? Is that what you mean, right? It was just the compositing on this one. Yeah, yeah. So where where did you get the raise, by the way? Uh, that, that was from a production crate. Okay, cool, cool. Um, well, first of all, from a compositing point of view, I feel like his legs, and that's why that's because they shot this wrong. It should have been shot on wires, of course, because the yeah. hang should be, the the leg should be hanging. And they they yeah. they should have really hanged them on the ceiling, and then he would have like weightless on the legs. But one way that you could solve that in comp is, I think you should um, just wait for him to show up. Uh, so let's just a second. Let's just go to the end here. Yeah, I think you should pick up these legs and do like a, a soft roto, and then use a warper. You could try a warper or you could try a transform, but I think with a warper, you could fake a little bit of movement on the legs, a really subtle movement, just a little bit sideways, just to look so that it looks like it's on the air. And maybe to make it more realistic, I would probably do one warper for each leg. So I would put one warper on this right leg and one on the left leg and have them very subtly move but i mean like the little little touch nothing yeah. almost almost nothing just so that it looks a bit more like it's uh, flying through the air um so so i think i think that would help a lot to sell the shot uh now in terms of of uh, composting itself i feel like there's something going on with your edges that look a bit strange. So especially on the head, there's like a lot of white edges uh, going around on his hair. So you need to kind of like perhaps use um, an edge extend node to try to break up this brightness, which I'm assuming the brightness is coming from, let's see here, it's coming from... Uh... Well, the green is quite nice. Let me give me a second. Wait a minute. Yeah, it only happens. It only happens sometimes. It's when you light up the green. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it's when you light up all of this. You're getting this line because you see before that looks great. So you see that's good. But then when you light up the um, these big big flashes on the back, you get this like really strange outline of light which looks a little bit fake. It looks fine on the arms, looks fine on the body, but it doesn't really look very good on the head, I think. And the other thing as well is I think you have too much defocusing on these ones. Like the ones on the front look great, and this one that crosses over the boot looks great, but the ones on the back look very fake because I think you added too much defocusing. They're t they, they should be sharp. They shouldn't be... There isn't enough distance to make this much depth of field, you know. Because if you look at the plate, you see even this door. Like I don't, I don't think this is a door, but whatever this is on the wall here, that's sharp. And this wall here and the ceiling is all sharp. Even the, I think this is the lamp. Do you have? Do you have a show the plate? Just the plate. Let me see if you. No, you don't. yeah, yeah. There you go. So you see, completely sharp. Even the exit is sharp. So. Because the whole plate is sharp, I would not believe that there would be any depth of field on your race, you know. 
Yeah. Your race should all be sharp, all of them. So, so I think remove the depth of field and then try to massage and adjust this line of blue around the head when it's synchronized to this ray. Try to get the legs to look like they're floating a bit more. Um, and then the other thing as well is that I think you're missing more light interacting. So flashes are really bright. And I think you, you need to brighten more the background uh, with the flashes. So when, when, they, when they happen, see like this one, especially this one. So in here we're fine. But then when this turns on, the whole back should be lit up by that. Right. You see, you should have a lot more light. Um, so you need to like look into that uh, of interacting lighting. The rest is fine because this one, this one is already there. So it's already lighting up the wall. That's the one that is already present, which is fine. Lits up the floor, lits up the wall. That's fine. But then you need to kind of like light up the background once the other one shows up. And then okay. this one here is fine. I would, would say that maybe this one that goes to the wall would probably lit up the wall a little bit more. I think I would say that. And then this one that comes along, the one that grows in here, would lit up this wall a bit more. So you need to kind of like color correct, animate the color correctors to lit up that wall, lit up this wall one by one. And then when the big ones show up, the whole back should be lit up. You see? So you need to animate some color correctors in between. And then the last lighting interaction that I would tell you would be this thing. So once he has the sphere on his hand, you see, notice how's your, how the hand doesn't have any lighting whatsoever. But then when the sphere appears, it still doesn't have any lighting whatsoever. So it's almost like you don't have any interaction between this sphere making any interaction with the hand. It needs to interact a bit with the hand especially because the core is so bright. So the core would drip some light into the fingers and the hands. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and then the other thing as well that I would say is the perspective of these rays look a bit strange. It would have been nice if it would have gone on a conical perspective going towards camera and not to the side. It, it just looks a bit strange, but but that's a more creative uh, approach. Like it's not really something you need to change. But but I think I think this this shot, if you're telling me that it's mostly a compositing job, I think it needs some work. You need 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 to tweak a few things for it to work. Um, but it's it's almost there. I mean, it's it's really almost there. Um, I wouldn't be too worried about it. I think the things that I've suggested are quite small. You know, they're not that big and they're not that tricky to do. So. So is this plate the one that Action VFX gives away? Is that the one? Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. It's quite a nice plate. Uh, very grainy though, but um, hmm. okay, cool. Well, I I hope you don't get too dissuaded dissu by the comments. Like I I understand that uh, obviously no one wants to hear that their reel has some issues and needs some work, but. But I hope, hopefully, you 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 think that it that uh, those are are comments that you can still do and still change. Um, how how do you feel about that? Oh, it's extremely helpful. This this is all stuff I I'm, I'm I'm going to go and apply. I need to go and apply. Yeah, it's extremely helpful. Thank you, thank you so yeah. much. I really I'm really apologize if you think it was too much and and if it was too harsh. I'm giving you like the my first impressions and and as much feedback as possible but um but i feel like i feel I, I don't think you should worry i think most of the issues we discussed today can be solved and most of the things can be sorted out quite easily i think you are talented you're very talented and you have a good show reel don't give up and don't get dissuaded by it i think i think you have some really good work here um and just work on on these shots and get them in a better place. Um, now, one thing I wanted to ask you: so you've been you've been sending this showreel already to companies, haven't you? Yeah. 
what's been the reaction? Have you been getting any feedback whatsoever? So this show reel, um, I only sent it, I think, two days ago. Okay. Um, cool. it, 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 the, it, on YouTube, it's had a lot of views. Don't know who viewed it. Um, but I've not had a, a reply from them yet. But my previous show reel was obviously sent out kind of during the strikes. And that was more, there wasn't as much compositing in it. And that had a lot of, um, oh, basically, the, the general was really, really good, but we're not hiring. I was like, okay. 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 <laughs> well, don't give yeah. up. Like, have you, and so you've sent it two days ago. How many companies have you sent it uh, to? Uh, three. Three? Okay. Um, now, I I understand that you might have a specific com company in mind, but, but, uh, maybe consider sending it to more, um, you know, like, um, because, you know, it's very tricky right now to get work. Um, you know, it's really tricky. There's like a, a lot of problems in the industry right now. It's a lot of competition, a lot of people sending show reels from all over the world in different places. There's a lot of seniors as well that they would probably prefer to hire. So if you don't get any response, I, I think you should start thinking about dozens of companies like send it to 50 to 100 companies because uh you might just get one reply but you only need yeah. one you know you only yeah. need one so and even if it's not the company that you really wanted for now at least it's a, a starting point yeah. because um one thing i would uh one thing i would say to you is that um once you work in one company especially if it's a company that is well respected you will never be out of the job unless you do a bad job on the company and then of course they don't recommend you but if you do a good job and you work on a on a top company you will never have to be you'll never be worried about again because most likely you'll stay on the company for months to come and then the other companies will talk with that company and they will all know each other you know so so open the web, like open the net bigger. I, I would recommend you to send it to more companies um, I, if you I've really want to have that first job, you know. I've applied to quite, uh, I've previously applied to quite a lot of studios in that first, um, first one I applied. But in this one, I've, um, I've been looking for kind of junior roles and there haven't really been too many to apply to. So I, I applied to one in Barcelona, obviously I live in the UK. Oh, cool. and, um, and it's obviously more to get a reply, the response. Um, but one of the things I'm, finding difficult is in these junior roles in, in compositing or in um, Houdini effects that they're requiring a junior I think like two to three years of experience in the industry and coming out of uni of course you experience. don't have experience of course but yeah but don't 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 be too worried about that that's just like typical conversation of all the job posts all the job posts say that but if they something if they see something cool they'll hire you it's just because they they put those things on job title on job offers just to filter out anyone that the sway anyone that really has no experience right. so i think your show reel is in a good place i think you need to do these adjustments for sure you know yeah. and i think i think you need to improve your show reel but I think you're in a good position to send anyway. So even if the company is not asking for someone, you should send it anyway. And just 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 pester the companies, you know, because the they're not gonna find you. Um they're never gonna find you because no one is looking on YouTube for showreels, you know. So people just look at whatever they receive on their on on the on their inbox. So I think I feel like like you need to to make sure you send it to as many companies as possible and ignore the three year, five year thing. Ignore it. Just just send it anyway. And okay. and put a letter of uh, like send it with an email saying like if you have a place to put an email, of course. Uh, sometimes it's just an application. But if you do have a place to put a comment, make sure you say, you know, I understand I have no experience, but I'm really eager to learn. I will do anything. I just want to be on the this industry. Give me a chance. Give me an opportunity. You know, like just, just really put your heart, your heart out there. Uh, and people, if it's heartfelt and and they feel like there's something on your showreel, and they wanna they wanna give you an opportunity, they might. You might be lucky. You know, that's why I'm saying you should send it to as many people as possible. And uh, also, I'll, I'll give you a few a few pointers from the um, 
from the chat. James here says, always remember to resubmit after an update of your reel. It looks good when you apply to take feedback and improve. And I think James has a point. So once you update your showreel, make sure you go back and re-upload to all the other places you've done. And you make sure you write wherever you have an opportunity to put a private message to say that this is my updated reel. I took in feedback from seniors and I did this. Like, make sure you write that saying, I showed it to a bunch of seniors. They gave me this feedback and this is what I've now updated. So just so they know. Um... Uh, thank you so much, Kat, for enjoying the re review. I'm really, really appreciate that. Um, so, like, uh, Kat also has here a good point. She says, um, uh, they say, uh, sometimes we are really focused on the technical stuff and overlook some of the other artistic aspects of or things like rhythm within the shot or scene. Uh, so it's good to have someone else's take a look. And I think Kat has a point. I'm, I'm really glad that you send the showreel here to this uh, channel because obviously I'm not an Odini artist, but I am a visual effects supervisor and I'm, I'll am give you the feedback from a point of view of a final shot, not really the technical side of it. I'm sure you can find people to give you technical uh, tips and tricks about the shot itself. But I think it's, it's important to keep in mind that the companies and the clients only see the final shot. They don't see the process and they don't care about the process. They just want the final shot. So it doesn't matter how you got there. Uh, it doesn't matter which software you use. It doesn't matter how you used it, what tricks you've used, what shortcuts you've done. As long as the shot looks good, no one is going to care. Um, so, so keep that in mind. So, so keep that open mind of showing it to people from other parts of the industry. I think that's, that's a really good point. You know, I, I try to do the same as well. Showing it to a composer, getting that feedback. Showing it to an animator, getting that feedback. Showing it to an effects artist, getting that feedback. And trying to get like a, 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 a broad uh, feedback loop around the shot, you know. Yeah. Cool, man. So, yeah, I guess that's it. <laughs> the, do you have any other question? I'm going to stop sharing my screen, but we can chat for a, more, a few more minutes. Any other things that you would like to say or ask or, yeah, you let me know. Um, no, I'm just very, very, very grateful for all of this feedback and, uh, and everyone in chat as well. It's, it's been awesome. I look forward to applying it and getting another showreel together. <laughs> cool. Never forget, yeah. uh, never forget, Xander, Xander, that you can always rewatch this uh, review. The review will be uh, will be public tomorrow. Uh, we'll have chapters as well for people to navigate the showreel as well. And and yeah, you're always welcome to come back if you have your updated showreel. Be sure to contact me, and we'll okay. we'll do it again. We've done that many times on the show where we've we've had other people coming in with updated showreels, and yeah, I. I I, I wish you the best of luck, and I hope you get a job real soon. And and thank you so much for joining the showreel review. It's I you. you're very welcome here, and 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 I'm really glad that that you came over and and showed the showreel to the world. You know. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Very no much problem. For me. I'll see you later. I'll see you soon. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Okay, that was great. Um, thank you so much, uh, Xander, for sticking around like that and and showing your work um okay cool so we're almost done so remember we have the giveaway to go now and then we're done uh i only have one reel today uh keep in mind if you've if you've sent the show reel to my channel you need to make sure you book it with me so that i can make sure you have a microphone a camera and we can chat before so you need to book it. When you send the showreel to the show, and the link is on the description of the video right now of the stream, make sure you book it. You contact me so we can book the thing like Xander did. Um, now, I've uh, shared the link of the giveaway. The giveaway is for my Nuke course. Uh, don't forget that next week we'll be back on Thursday again. I will do it again at 3 o'clock and see how this works at 3 o'clock. Um because I don't want to like interfere with other channel streams. And I know Foundry usually has streams at five. Um, so you, you keep me posted with feedback if you think this 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 timing doesn't work. 
Um, and I'll be back next week with some composting. Now, thank you so much for the lovely messages. A lot of people here really enjoying the feedback. People saying that they really enjoy to see these showreel reviews. Thank you so much for saying that. Uh, especially, thank you so much, Lucas, for the wonderful message that you sent me. Um, that's really nice. I, I try to help as much as I can. I'm trying to help people to getting into the industry, trying to give constructive feedback. Uh, I don't really shame anyone here on the stream. Don't say, you know, I don't say negative words like, this is shit, this is bad. I, that's not how we do showreels here. We do it in a constructive way. That's the whole plan, you know. So, but yeah, I, I really... Really, uh, that's good. That's good, Kurt. I'm glad to hear that, Kurt, that he, that these streams motivate you to update your showreel. That's the whole point. I'm, I'm happy that that's happening. I'm glad that that's happening. And for all, the, all those of you listening right now, don't, re don't forget that there's a playlist with all the showreel reviews I've done so far. Um, I know I haven't uploaded the ones from Twitch. I need to do that. But the ones from Twitch... There's like 75 reviews that I've done there. I need to upload them. But uh, but yeah, the ones on YouTube, they're all there. Um, and yeah, let's let's do the um, let's do the giveaway and see who's gonna win um, the giveaway. And then we're gonna go. And don't forget to go to Foundry's uh, stream as well. And again, uh, thank you so much, BankQ, for the for the lovely support on the channel. Uh, it's because of you that we can do these uh, streams. Um, and uh, I'm always very happy with my BenQ monitors here. So I just want to like shout out BenQ for supporting the channel and also for making such awesome monitors as well. So thank you so much for that. Um, so yeah, thank you, BenQ. <laughs> okay, so let's do the giveaway. Um, okay, so I'm going to go in here. We have... 65 people look at that 65 people that's awesome so let's do the winners here um <laughs> so uh the winners of the nuke course uh, and of course don't forget if you don't win the nuke course today <laughs> we you can always buy it um it's the link is over here so have a look at it and see if you're interested and you can always you can always buy it. Okay, so who's the winner of my nuke course? Let's see here. So I have Oh, this is going to be tricky to say the name. Oh man. Why why do you always have such weird names on the <laughs> on the handles? The winner of the nuke course is uh such weird names always that everyone has here. Uh, they cat. Okay, so the winner is. Uh, I'm assuming this is a Twitter handle. So the winner is die die cat. So at die cat underscore. I think that's the name. Die cat. Die cat. I think so. Would that be the same cat that was chatting just a while ago? Oh, that's you? Okay, cool. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's your name. So, congratulations, uh, Kat. You've won my Nuke course. Um, <laughs> congratulations. I will... Um, okay, I see. That cat is German. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, congratulations. Uh, the giveaway today uh, went all the way to Colombia. Congratulations and shout out to Colombia. Uh, we have a lot of viewers always from there. Um, so Orlando, you're a bit late now. The giveaway is already done. Uh, we'll have one. Every, we have one every week. So don't don't forget that uh, next week the giveaway is a Nuke license, a Nuke Indie license. So next week on Thursday we'll have a Nuke Indie license. So we do the streams every week and we alternate between showreel reviews and between composting. And so next week it's composting. So the giveaway will be a Nuke Indie license. And then the week after will be showreel reviews and then we'll give away a Nuke course. That's always the way it goes. So Kat, don't worry. I'll be contacting you in the next few days by email. Uh, and I, I guess that's it really. That's it. That's the stream. Thank you so much for joining. I know it was a bit shorter today, but uh, but yeah, thank you so much. 
I'll see you all later. I'll see you all later. Have a great day. Don't forget to go and see the Foundry stream, and which is at five. It's in about 20, 23 minutes from now. Um, and yeah, I hope you have a great 